can join us for an important conversation about this. So I'll be speaking to the director of the Breast Cancer Center at GBMC all about this disease on Facebook Live. We're going to be taking all of your questions about breast cancer, which you can submit right now on the WMAR2 News Facebook page, or you can jump into the conversation and ask your questions then. That's all going to get started at 9 o'clock this morning. And today is also National Indigenous People Day. On Friday, President Biden changed October 11th from Columbus Day to Indigenous People Day to celebrate and honor Native Americans and commemorate their history and cultures. And there's going to be a lot of celebrations happening all over Baltimore today. Uh, there's one taking place at noon at the Native American Lifelines of Baltimore. They're going to be hosting an event at the Kaiser Quad at the Johns Hopkins University Homewood Campus. Well, Star Trek's own Captain Kirk will be traveling to space again, but for real this time. We'll tell you why William Shatner will have to wait another day, though, for his voyage. And two women who made history in space are hoping to inspire more women to get into science. We'll have more on that coming up after the break. Right now it is 5.08. Like us on Facebook and see how WMAR2 News is working for you. All right, time now is the 511 and a good workout might not be as hard to achieve as you might think. It's all about your mindset, right? So first thing is to know your fatigue triggers. When you work out, when you're tired, your brain thinks that your limits are less than what they are, and that causes your workouts to be shorter and less impactful. So you can combat this by distracting your mind, thinking positive thoughts and even smiling through the pain, which I found works sometimes. Uh, music can alter your perception of effort too. Inspirational jams can help active people improve their endurance, running capacity and speed. And of course, the right beverage can give your brain more go power. Uh, we're not talking about beer and wine here. According to the study in the Journal of Psychology, cycling participants who had a sports drink, they finished a time trial at least a minute ahead of the control group. Look at those fit people just running in this video right here. <laughs> makes you just want to go for a little jog, doesn't it, Lynette? Makes me exhausted <laughs> just looking at him. Oh, yeah. can I roll my chair over to the chroma key? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's how we roll exactly. around here yeah. on Good Morning Maryland. More power so to them. That's I right. Sleep. Good I for did, them. I didn't sleep well last night, maybe. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, if they want to go exercise today, how's the weather looking for them? It looks pretty good. Right. Yeah, and I know a lot of people like to exercise, not necessarily with all that sunshine. So, yeah, we want some clouds out there, and that's exactly what we will have for today. And then a few peaks of sunshine. But look what's going on across the middle of the nation. Boy, they're going to be dealing with some severe weather uh, through this morning, through this afternoon, this evening as well. Whereas we'll be a little bit calmer. Yes, we do have that area of low pressure here off the coast, and this is that onshore flow that will continue to pump in those clouds as we go throughout the day. But again, we will have some breaks in those clouds before it's all said and done. The satellite radar, we're not going to pick up on a whole lot. It's uh, going to be a quiet day. We're not going to be dealing with uh, the rain out there. No shower activity, really, and that will be the trend for a while. We'll bring back the chances for some showers in the forecast as we head into the weekend. But out the door this morning, temperature wise, number above average once again. So we haven't had below average temperatures in a while and actually numbers are just going to get warmer in the days to come. I know a lot of you are like, boo, get her off, get her off. But that is what's going to be happening because I know you guys like the fall temperatures and we aren't really going to be feeling fall as we go into your Wednesday. We're going to be hitting the 80s. So 63 degrees is the temperature, common temperature this morning around Manchester, Jarrettsville, Havid and Grace. We're seeing this in Severn this morning, Ellicott City and even Frederick and Hagerstown as well. We have a 70 degree number in Chesapeake Beach this morning. The dew points, I can't wait till I don't have to show this anymore because that means that we're going to be dealing with more comfy conditions. This morning numbers aren't really that bad, especially where you're seeing those upper 50s, the low 60s will take that tolerable, but the muggy meter not looking good. That little guy still sweating a bit and we're really going to do that as we head towards the end of the work week, but we like that 48 that we see on Sunday, right? So we'll wait for that and we will start to see some changes in the forecast. We're looking at the tropical update and this is good news. Yeah, I'm trying to dig myself out of that hole of the 80 degrees. Good news with the tropical update. 10% chance as we go in through the next uh, two days as we look at this tropical wave over the eastern Caribbean. So a very low chance. We have a very low chance with another tropical wave that we're seeing east southeast of the Windward Islands, and this has about a 20% chance over the next two days of development as well. So we zoom in and we can see for the rest of today, we'll start to see again maybe a few peaks of sunshine out there, not the abundant sunshine as of now. That onshore flow really going to overtake us for today and possibly Tuesday, and then Wednesday we'll start 
start to see a little bit more sunshine in the forecast for us, and then we'll start to warm those temperatures up as, as well. So out the door cast for today looks like this. So some areas dealing with a little bit of patchy fog, especially off to the north and west, but we will have those clouds lingering, but also a few peaks of sunshine for today. High temperatures staying above average. I'm going about 75 degrees today when we should be right around 71, 70 degrees at this point. We hit 76 as we head towards your Tuesday and then Wednesday we will heat things up 81 82 as we head into what your Thursday 83 on Friday and then as we head into Sunday Megan night numbers go back down. Let's get a check of the traffic now with Lauren. Thank you very much Lynette. I'm tracking a vehicle fire just reported on Route 32. This is eastbound at Dorsey Run Road. Other than that, we're quiet so far this Monday. No delays on 95 from Howard County or Harford County into downtown Baltimore 895 also up to speed here at the split. The JFX is in the green and 695 is moving right along. No trouble crossing the key bridge heading up to Towson or here on the west side in either direction at Baltimore National Pike. High speeds in Marriottsville and Ellicott City on Interstate 70. 97 and Route 50 are also in the green if you are making that stretch into Annapolis. Megan. All right, Lauren, thank you. Well, in 1983, Sally Ride became the first woman in space. In 2017, Peggy Whitson broke the U.S. record for the longest time in space for a woman. And then just two years ago, two women became the first to take part in an all-female spacewalk. Despite these high-profile wins, though, women only earn one in three undergraduate astronomy degrees and only one in a fifth of all physics degrees. So WMAR 2 News' Kelly Swoop has more on how two scientists are working to get more women in science fields. Tiny vowels of moon dust unlock a world of information for planetary scientist Carrie Donaldson Hanna. I mean, it's pretty exhilarating. Carrie is part of a team studying NASA's Lunar Compact Infrared Imaging System, or LSERIS. The thermal camera will help scientists find water sources on the moon's south pole. There's portions of the south pole of the moon that get absolutely no sunlight. The seeds of Carrie's space study were sown in an earthly place. I grew up on a small family farm in a very small town called Mexico, Missouri. But her yearly family vacation took her through the Kennedy Space Center. I think that was kind of like those first seeds of, wow, there's something outside of Earth. Research scientist Autumn Shackelford also grew up in a tiny southern town. Her imagination caught fire early on after a family trip to a science center. My mom leaned over and she said, I think you'd be good at this sort of thing. Neither woman had a blueprint to follow when it came to studying physics or astronomy. When I told my high school counselor that I wanted to go to school in Florida and study physics and space sciences, he asked me what my backup plan was. But both women were exposed to science by their families in positive interactive ways. Both read and watched everything printed or produced about space, found supportive mentors, and searched out learning opportunities. Both say they are proof that it doesn't matter where you start. With support and self-motivation, women should reach for the moon and beyond. All right, that was Kelly Swoop reporting, and the project that Donaldson Hanna's lab is collaborating on, the L. Cyrus is expected to launch aboard a lunar lander as early as December of 2023. And speaking of flying off to space, actor William Shatner is getting ready to launch into orbit. Now, his trip has been delayed, though, a day due to the weather, so he is now set to take off on Wednesday instead of tomorrow. Shatner is making the trip on a Blue Origin spacecraft, which is owned by billionaire Jeff Bezos, who also went to space not that long ago. The company shared a picture of Shatner arriving at their astronaut village yesterday. He is known for his role in Star Trek as Captain Kirk and will become the oldest person to ever fly into space. I plan to be looking out the window with my nose pressed against the window. The only thing I don't want to see is a little gremlin looking back at me. <laughs> yeah, that would terrify me too, William Jatner. Uh, he will be going to space with three other people. And again, that flight now pushed back to Wednesday because of weather conditions. So hopefully the weather cooperates for him on Wednesday. All right, Google is adding something new to its search engine. We'll have those details coming up in today's Tech Bites. And your favorite store could have a little less on the shelves. We'll talk about what's causing some of the shortages that you're seeing at the grocery store. Time now is 5:19. All right, time now is 522 and be prepared to not find everything that you need for your holiday meals this year. Many of the country's biggest food makers 
are telling grocers that they will have limited supplies of a number of products. Now, some grocers are blaming it on labor and transportation constraints, as well as packaging issues. So, for example, some seasonings are going to be in tight supply due to challenges getting glass bottles. Companies like Costco and Sam's Club have recently reinstated purchase limits for customers on certain products. Well, experts at Goldman Sachs say the economic growth for this year in 2022 will be lower than expected. Bloomberg says the firm is tying the declines in expectations to consumer spending. Goldman Sachs looked at several factors, including the reopening process for businesses and how much Americans have saved. It says the latest surge in COVID-19 cases continues to hamper people's uh, willingness to spend money. And the latest iPhone from Apple could be delayed because of shortages, and it is forcing carriers to find some creative ways to keep their customers happy while they wait for it. Consumer reporter John Matarese is going to check them out coming up in the 6 o'clock hour of Good Morning Maryland. Well, Facebook says it is introducing several new controls to keep kids away from harmful content on Instagram. ABC's Mona Koza Abdi has the details in today's Tech Fights. In today's Tech Bites, Facebook says it will implement new tools to increase transparency and safety. It comes after a whistleblower told Congress last week that the company ignored concerns about the impact of social media on teens. The company says the new feature will prompt teens to take a break from Instagram and will also nudge teens if they're repeatedly looking at the same harmful content. TikTok is now on LG TVs. The video platform launched the app in Europe on LG's newest smart TVs. The kickoff is taking place in the UK, Germany and France before making its way to the U.S. And want to tune your guitar? Try Google Search. The function now sports a built-in tuner. Just play a string into the microphone on your phone or computer. Google Tuner detects the notes you're hoping for, then advises whether you should tune up or tune down, unless, of course, you're playing air guitar, which is always in tune. Those are your tech bites. Rock on. Have a great day. We're for those who love to discover, who know an open mind is the only kind, who are their own personal stylist, who know where to escape, even just for a moment, who don't need a fortune to find a gem, and who know when you spend less, you can discover even more and never, ever stop discovering. Spend less, discover more at TJ Maxx. Stainless steamer cleans your whole home. All you gotta do is pick up the phone. It's not just carpet anymore. It's tile, wood, stone, really any floor. Call 1-800-STEAMER now. We'll clean your home and you'll say, wow. With clean, fresh ingredients, Panera's new chicken sausage and pepperoni flatbread is a mouth-watering explosion of yes. Craft, yes. Hardiness, yes. Living life to the flavor fullest, heck yes. Panera, live your yes. Now $1 delivery. Straight out of a spy movie, a nuclear engineer and his wife accused of espionage. Details from the FBI about their 18-month investigation, which involves a peanut butter sandwich. A month after a tornado touched down in Annapolis, the cleanup efforts are still going on. How a local shopping center stepped up to help those impacted by the twister. And it is a purple Monday here in Baltimore. We have a preview of the Ravens' big game against the Indianapolis Colts. You're watching the station that's working for you, WMAR 2 News. Now, good morning, Maryland. All right, it's 5.30 right now on this purple Monday morning. It's October 11th. Good morning, Maryland. I'm Megan Knight filling in for Christian. Thanks so much for watching us and streaming us on your favorite device. So let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Lynette Charles, who's also donning her purple for this purple <laughs> Monday. Not it's to Friday. be confused with purple Friday, but... Yeah, you, I know, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I know. It's Monday, but we're going to be pumped like it's Friday. Uh. I mean, I was pumped until you did it again, Megan. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, okay, at least so we can fun. get pumped about the weather for tonight. Yeah, we can. At least it's going to be dry. They don't have to blame it on the weather. Yep, uh, you know, right. they always blame, blame it on everything. Them. Blame it on the rain. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to happen. No rain. <laughs> No rain, just temperatures above average as we do kick off halftime temperature coming in right around 67 degrees. It's going to be a great night for some football. We'll actually even uh, poke some holes in those clouds as the day goes on for today. So you're stepping out the door this morning and we will be a cloudy, uh, mostly cloudy skies before it's all said and done and possibly maybe even partly cloudy skies as we head more towards the later afternoon time frame. But we will be dealing with that onshore flow today. Temperatures are in the low 60s, upper 60s in some spots and of course 
those mid 60s. We're seeing that around Easton this morning and also around Chestertown. Look at all the 63s back off Thurmont over towards Elkton. We're seeing it in Bel Air this morning around Columbia back towards Frederick and even Parkton. All the numbers are above average at this point. The winds right now sustained up to about uh, 12 miles an hour, so it is a bit breezy out there this morning. Numbers will die down as we go throughout the day, and that's that easterly flow that we're dealing with. You don't necessarily need the jacket this morning. The t-shirt will be fine. I would take the sunglasses just in case, and you do not need that umbrella as we continue through the rest of today. Let's get to check the traffic now with Lauren. Thank you very much, Lynette. I'm tracking a vehicle fire reported on Route 32. This is eastbound at Dorsey Run Road. Other than that, we're quiet this Monday. 95 is in great shape into Baltimore City. 895 also clear. This is a live drive right at the split. Same story on 83, whether you're traveling the Harrisburg Expressway or taking the JFX into downtown Baltimore. 695 also clear from Parkville up to Towson and here on the west side of Baltimore National Pike. Nothing to worry about on 795 through Owings Mills. High speeds in Ellicott City on Interstate 70. 97 and Route 50 are also quiet traveling into Annapolis. Hopefully it will stay that way. Megan, over to you. Yes, hopefully. Thank you, Lauren. Well, now to that breaking news out of Harford County where one man is lucky to be alive after his house exploded. Here's a live look at the scene for you right now. This explosion happening on Thornberry Drive. This is in Edgewood. You can see that home totally leveled and two other houses next to it. They were also severely damaged. Now the state fire marshal's office says the man who was inside the home at the time it exploded was ejected and thrown out of it. He is now being treated for severe burns all over his body being treated at Johns Hopkins Bayview. No one else was hurt in this and there are reports of debris being found as far as five to ten blocks away. WMAR 2 News is Erin McPherson. She's at the scene now gathering more information. She'll have more on the story coming up for us in our next half hour. Well, a couple from Annapolis is facing some pretty serious charges from the U.S. government. They're accused of trying to give out top secret information to a foreign government. FBI agents arrested Jonathan Toby and his wife Diana in West Virginia over the weekend. Jonathan works as a nuclear engineer for the Navy. According to the Justice Department, Toby is accused of trying to pass on information about the design of American nuclear powered submarines. Officials say he thought he was talking to a foreign government representative, but it was actually an undercover FBI agent. Investigators say Toby was part of a scheme that started in April of last year. They say he sent a package of Navy documents containing sensitive information to a foreign government. The FBI intercepted that package and that's what launched their investigation. Now in West Virginia this weekend, authorities say Diana acted as the lookout while Jonathan dropped off an SD card hidden in a peanut butter sandwich. The Tobys are expected back in court tomorrow in West Virginia. Well, it's been a month now since the remnants of Hurricane Ida caused a tornado to tear through parts of Annapolis. Homeowners and store owners there are still trying to recover from all that devastation. It was quite a mess. Last night, there was a fundraiser to help people bounce back. And WMAR 2 News' Abby Isaacs has that story for us this morning. They raised well over $10,000 that will go directly to families who had their homes badly damaged or destroyed last month. <coughs> Rock show in Annapolis can't go wrong. Especially when all the money raised goes to their neighbors. It's just nice to be able to come and contribute, you know, help the people out that have really had some loss. Sunday, the Annapolis Town Center hosted Night Out on the Town, a benefit concert to support people impacted by the devastating tornado during Hurricane Ida last month. My children's old alma mater, South River High School, uh, the football field was damaged badly. Um, a lot of the houses back there were totally destroyed. Uh, so, um, you know, it impacted our community and our neighbors a lot. The town center worked with a local community organization to figure out who the money would go to ultimately identifying families on Oakwood Road in Edgewater to receive the support. We wanted to make sure that uh, our uh, fundraising dollars help impacted families specifically, and also that uh, area um, is now the second time they've been hit in, in, in about a year. Oh, would you look at that? There's the sub. Maryland native Dana Koch and Frederick-based 80s band The Reagan Years used their musical talents to help raise over $10,000. It's great to be back in Annapolis. It's just great to play for a very appreciative crowd that's here for music and to benefit such good things. 
It's just, it just goes to show that there's still so much good in this world. The town center covered all the costs of the event, so all the money from the ticket sales went straight to those who need it. We all look at businesses as in like sales and revenue, um, and everyone looks at profit share. Um, but the biggest thing for us um, as a community hub is all about the heart share, um, and that we are able to take what we're feeling in here um, through creativity and provide an opportunity for the community to come out, uh, come together and enjoy and also help support others. The town center is going to set up a meeting with the families to present them with the money raised. In Annapolis, Abby Isaacs, WMAR 2 News. Well, one of the only Korea towns in the United States is right here in Maryland and it received some special recognition over the weekend. And if you have a chance to watch uh, some professional basketball in Baltimore before you watch the Ravens game tonight, the Wizards are coming to town. They got a special giveaway. We have all of those details coming up for you after the break. Time now is 536. Well, Maryland now has one of the few official Korea towns in the United States. Over the weekend, Governor Hogan, along with First Lady Yumi Hogan, who is Korean American, opened the Korean American community in Ellicott City. It's a five mile stretch along Route 40 in Ellicott City that has more than 170 Korean businesses and roughly 12,000 Korean Americans live in that area. South Korea's ambassador to the United States joined the governor for this ceremony. Pretty cool. All right, Dancing with the Stars is back tonight on WMAR. And for the first time since the start of the season, this couple right here, they'll be back in the ballroom. We're going to have a preview with Lynette, our Dancing with the Stars expert, coming up. All right, it is 542 right now, and Dancing with the Stars is back tonight on WMAR. And one couple will be reuniting in the ballroom after dancing separately last week. Professional dancer Cheryl Burke and Peloton instructor Cody Rigsby will be performing together in person, which is great news. This is a photo that she posted on her Instagram of the two of them rehearsing for their Disney themed performances tonight. Now you may remember both of them did test positive for COVID despite the fact that they are both vaccinated. So they danced separately in their homes last week, which is kind of weird. Uh, they did receive the lowest score of the night an 18 out of 30. However, they did survive. They were not eliminated from the from the competition. So we're going to see how they do tonight, which you can watch Dancing with the Stars at 8 o'clock right here on WMAR. And at 8 a.m., we're going to have a special Facebook Live with Lynette and also one of our directors, Katie, to talk all things Dancing with the Stars. It'll be nice to see them dance in person. Yeah, May night is just... It's you're supposed to have your partner there, right? And they were dancing separately, right? So that's a breaking the rules. And I'm oh. a like Carrie Ann and Naba, and there was a lift, and I'm docking them. That's how Ooh. hard she is. Ooh, all yeah. right. So Catherine, get ready for that today, <laughs> and everybody else. Yeah. All right. But other than that, are we excited for the Disney theme performance? Oh, of course, that's we always get excited. You, Catherine, and I have dressed up for Disney before. Oh, yeah. Are we going to see that today? No, we're not prepared. Oh. <laughs> I'm still I'm coming down off of Brit Brit. That was last week. Yeah, so yeah, that was a good one. Exactly. All right. We're getting ready for that. And we're going to get ready for the weather today yes. because we are going to be dealing with the clouds for the most part. But we'll see a few breaks from time to time. And temperature wise today, numbers above average. And we're just going to get warmer as the day go, the days go on, I should say. As we head towards Wednesday, we're headed to the 80s before it's all said and done. Today, we will stay in the mid 70s, but we should be in the low 70s now for this time of the year. The satellite and radar picking up on a little bit of patchy fog out there, especially down back off to the north and west, they should say. And then as we head off towards the west, look at there, a big batch of showers and thunderstorms. This is all courtesy of this big system. Uh, this one's pretty much going to stay away from us. Today we're going to be watching this area of low pressure there, and that continues to spin in some onshore flow, some clouds for us today, and that's why we're dealing with that more of the easterly flow, and that's why we are going to stay more with those clouds as we go throughout the day today and also your tomorrow, and then we'll start to see some changes in the forecast. Out the door this morning, though, temperatures above average everywhere. Once again, numbers in the mid 60s. We have the upper 60s. Look at this around Annapolis and also around Chesapeake Beach, Solomons. And then we're at 64 in Centerville. Good morning, Easton. You're at 65 degrees. Let's head back to the mountains and we can see what's happening off towards Frostburg. 62, but 57 degrees right now in Deep Creek. So a bit cooler there, a bit chillier there, but that's the only spot. And that's the, that's the place that's usually the coolest. So the dew points. 
Not bad. We'll take that this morning. These numbers will continue to increase, though, especially over the days to come. The muggy meter is going to get a little bit higher as we head towards the end of the work week, and then those numbers will go back down as we head towards the weekend. So that's some good news, especially into your Sunday. The tropical update, not a whole lot to see here. You can carry on as we do have just a low chance of development as we look at this tropical wave over the eastern Caribbean as of now. About a 10% chance of development in the next two days. And then we look at this next tropical wave here east southeast of the windward islands and this has about a 20 percent chance in the next two days about a 30 percent chance of development in the next uh, five days so once again that's a low chance of development the future cast really not going to do a whole lot over the next several days we're not going to be dealing with a whole lot of precip so this week will be different from last week in that aspect but this week will be very similar in the fact that we're still dealing with those clouds coming in across the area so for today for tomorrow and then we'll start to see again those changes trying to occur occur as we head more towards your Wednesday afternoon into your Thursday and also your Friday and then by Saturday we'll bring back the rain chances to the forecast but out the door what do you need this morning I don't think you necessarily need the rain gear today but I would grab the sunglasses if you just again we could see a few peaks of it just be ready just have it on the ready and you see the sun you're like boom bam there you go all ready to go the seven day forecast heats things up as we head into your Wednesday we stay with those 80s as we go into Saturday as well and then finally temperatures go back down. Let's get a check of the traffic now with Lauren.